Eugene and I poured ourselves into the back of the black Prius, moonlighting as an Uber. It was the end of the night, and I was definitely drunk. So naturally, and like many times before, I opened up Grindr on my phone. <laughs> Not the best decision when you probably can't hold a conversation in person and too drunk to drive, but finding sex on an app was still on the table in my head. Eugene launched into his all too familiar line of questioning with the driver. So where are you from? I glance up to see the driver's eyes peering back at us in a rearview mirror. Somalia, he re responded with a thick accent. I instantly got the, look at me, I'm the captain now vibe from him. <laughs> I couldn't help but think conservative Muslim, but Eugene pressed on, not my rating. He ordered the Uber. How long have you lived here? He continued, two years. One would think the questions would build upon one another, but not with Eugene. <laughs> Very next question, do you like men or women? <laughs> this was not the first time I heard him ask a driver that, but yet I still gasped on the inside. <laughs> he replied, both. <laughs> oh, Eugene delighted. I shook my head and continued window shopping on Grindr. Eugene then asked, which do you like more? Without hesitation, he replied, men, I like men. Eugene grilled him for a few more questions. The driver didn't all seem to mind. His eyes darted between the road and the rearview mirror. I hadn't said a word the entire ride and we were nearing my apartment. Eugene lived a few blocks from me so we often Uber home together from the bars. Eugene informed him that we, he would drop me off, then continue to his own apartment, except the driver stops the car two blocks from my building and places the car in park. Confused, Eugene and I look at each other. He adjusted the rearview mirror so that he was now clearly looking at me. Our eyes met in reflection. He turns in his, sentence, he turns in his seat and says, you, show me your dick. Eugene immediately burst into laughter and exited the car saying, see ya, talk to you later. <laughs> the driver repeated his demand, show me your dick. I froze. Just two minutes prior, I was in fact cruising guys on an app. <laughs> and now this driver was demanding to see my dick but it was the authoritative nature of his request that caught me off guard. I finally snapped out of my trance. I need to go. I walked the final two blocks home, replaying the scene in my head and thinking how it was just perfectly, yet unintentionally set up by Eugene. <laughs> I met a Eugene 11 years ago. We both were recruiting at the San Diego Pride Festival for our departments, not for the gay agenda, as you may think. We both worked in law enforcement. We were doing outreach and recruiting for our departments. Me, Border Patrol, and him, Harbor Police. Our booths were equipped with pop-up tents and tables, and we were next to each other in a cul-de-sac within Balboa Park. It would be the recruiter I was working with that introduced me to Eugene that Saturday afternoon. Eugene was tall, blonde, and had intense blue eyes. It would actually be another four years before we meet again. I had joined a local flag football league and after our Saturday games, one of the sponsoring bars hosted a league for an after party of sorts. I was chatting with a group of three or four guys from the league when Eugene walked up to the group. Ryan, one of the guys I was chatting with and league players spoke up. This is my partner, Eugene, he said. Everyone had introduced themselves. I said, I'm Derek, do you play in the league also? Eugene cocked his head. Are you kidding me, you stupid bitch? I know you, you're Derek the Border Patrol agent. This would mark my first memorable moment of meeting Eugene. <laughs> the exchange kind of tells you everything you need to know about him, sarcastic and outspoken. If he likes you, you'll probably be a target of his ridicule. If he dislikes you, you'll probably be a target of his ridicule. <laughs> Minus the sarcasm, ju thus driving home whatever point he was out to make. So a risque conversation with the Uber driver and Lyft is not unusual. There has been two occasions where he has convinced the driver to end their shift and come to a bar to drink with us. 
And then there's the time we nearly got into a fist fight with the driver. We had stopped at a taco shop after a long night of drinking. Eugene had purchased my California burrito along with his food, so I ordered the car. According to the app, we were waiting for a beige minivan, which soon pulled up. The side door slid open electronically on either side of the van. An intense tropical air freshener filled the cabin of the vehicle. <laughs> the driver had dark hair and a thick mustache. He appeared to be of Middle Eastern descent. He gave us a gruff hello as we buckled in. Eugene started going through the bag. She didn't separate the orders, he said. That meant I had to carry my burrito like a common drunk. <laughs> the driver spoke up sternly. No eating in my car. Eugene responded, we're not eating, sir. I'm just handing him his burrito. It's probably as good as his night is going to get. He glared at us in the river mirror. <laughs> Eugene stated again, I promise you, we're not eating. Sitting next to me, Eugene handed me my full wrap burrito from the bag. Within his bag, though, was also an open bag of tortilla chips. It was far from an act of defiance. It was not premeditated. But I took it upon myself to snag a single tortilla chip. <laughs> to my surprise, the sound of a crunching chip in my mouth inspired a fit of road rage like I had never seen. <laughs> We hadn't made it three blocks from the taco shop when the driver slams on the brakes, throws the minivan into park in a residential intersection. Get out, he shouted. <laughs> what? I said. You heard me, get out. Eugene laughed. You are kidding me, right? He wasn't. The doors began to slide open. <laughs> the driver gets out and heads for Eugene, who was on his side of the vehicle. He grabs him by the arm and attempts to pull Eugene from the minivan. Futile effort since he was buckled in. <laughs> Eugene once again laughs into a fit of laughter. I said, what the fuck is happening? I exited the vehicle to come around to their side with my burrito in hand. The driver and Eugene were now standing in the middle of the street. He still had Eugene by the arm. Eugene was red in the face laughing uncontrollably. Eugene's laughter somehow fueled his anger. Just no respect, he shouted as speckles of spit escaped a thick mustache sitting on his lip. What the hell is wrong with you, I shouted. Suddenly a sedan pulls up and lights up the intersection. A tall, slender man wearing linen gets out. My friend, he said, what is going on? The two drivers then began to speak in what I assumed was their native language. I had no idea if they knew each other or simply shared the language. Words went back and forth. The second driver manages to calm him down and gets him behind the wheel and on his way. We were left standing there in the middle of the intersection while my burrito grew cold and I grew angry. <laughs> I may have even said, wait until Uber customer service hears about this. <laughs> Maybe it was the alcohol, but this was a little out of my character. It was usually Eugene flying off the handle, not me. <laughs> I was the calm one. <laughs> Maybe I felt compelled to make up for his unusual calm response after being manhandled, a yin yang of sorts response on my part. I have seen him release a fury on many for far less. There was one night I was on the receiving end of that rage. The night I went to the red dress party with Eugene, Eugene's cousin Lacey, and our friend Aaron. <laughs> it was a fundraiser for AIDS. <laughs> it, it, was a fun, it was a fundraiser for AIDS, HIV awareness. Attendees, of course, were asked to wear a red dress. Me being the overthinker that I am, I had enough, enough foresight to wear a fanny pack. <laughs> because the dress I wore left nothing to the imagination, nor did it have pockets for my wallet, keys, and phone. Soon, I was designated to hold everyone's things. For the life of me, I didn't understand why Lacey, the actual person most likely wear a dress in real life, didn't have a purse. <laughs> With the slack in my belt, the fanny pack sat on my right hip. With every round of drinks purchased, I was required to pull out a debit card for my fanny pack. <laughs> Clearly sensing my frustration, they just began to pull and stuff and put things in my fanny pack <laughs> as it hung from my hip. Outside that minor nuisance, it was a fun evening of drinking and dancing. The event promptly ended at 11. We all decided to end the night at a neighborhood bar for warmer nightcap. 
We have been drinking for a few hours, now teetering the line between tipsy and messy. Aaron informs me that he's going home and dives into my fanny pack for his house keys and wallet. The rest of us leave shortly after. Outside the bar, I discover Aaron had taken Lacey's ID, Eugene's debit card, and hadn't actually taken his house keys. <laughs> Aaron was clearly past tipsy, and I immediately called him. He answered, I can't find my keys. <laughs> no shit, I still have them. Eugene, standing beside me, began shouting in my ear. <laughs> my phone is about to die. I can't find my debit card. I mean an Uber. <laughs> Lacey is nowhere in sight. Aaron again. Can you bring me my keys? I'm not Ubering up to La Jolla in a dress because you forgot your keys. <laughs> Meet me at my apartment. Fuck you, Derek, Eugene shouted. <laughs> You're a shitty friend. I'm going home. <laughs> Eugene stumps off down the street in his red dress and combat boots. <laughs> Wait a fucking minute. We can Uber together. Back on the phone, Aaron's still pleading with me to bring him his keys. Aaron, come down. Crash on my couch, and I'll drive you home tomorrow. Goodbye. I pull up the app to order the car. Closest ride was 13 minutes out. I sat on the curb in my red dress waiting for my car. The bar was starting to clear out, so others were loitering around waiting for rides also. I was the only one in the dress. <laughs> I wondered if Eugene was going to walk all the way home, a good three miles from the bar. After him shouting at me, I was still one worried than angry, excuse me, still more worried than angry. He sat out on foot in a red dress in the middle of the night. Eugene to me was a shoulder to cry on, a dog sitter, and my sounding board. He was someone I could depend on. There was no doubt in my mind that we would laugh about this tomorrow. And to be perfectly honest, there was a good chance one of us wouldn't remember this tomorrow. <laughs> a black Prius, my ride soon pulled up. I mumbled a hello and got into the back seat. He mapped out the address I had previously programmed into my request. I didn't open up Grinder because I wanted to be on the lookout for Eugene. If he had indeed attempted to walk all the way home, we'd most likely be on the same route. With no music playing, the ride, w the ride was eerily quiet. A text message alert in my phone cut the silence. It was a message from Aaron. I'm outside your place. Hurry. I laughed, picturing him standing outside my downtown apartment building waiting for me in his red dress looking like a tragic sex worker. <laughs> I let him know I was just a few minutes out. Another text message from Eugene. I'm home, bitch. <laughs> then another, sorry. I laughed and text back, glad you made it. I had no idea how he made it home so fast and with a dead phone, but he did. The driver slowed to a stop on a poorly lit corner a block from my apartment. His eyes caught my own in the rearview mirror. I thought about how all the eyes in the rearview mirror began to look alike. It's another block up, I said. Remember me? He said. <laughs> I said, excuse me? He turned in his seat and he said, remember me? Show me your dick. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for my friends coming out. I love you guys.